God asks Jeremiah to do it for God's name's sake? Today we're at Jeremiah 14, verses 7 to 9. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake. For our backslidings are many, we have sinned against you. O the hope of Israel, his Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land and like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for a night? Why should you be like a man astonished? like a mighty one who cannot save? Yet you, O Lord, are in our midst, and we are called by your name. Do not leave us. Jeremiah prays for God's people. He confesses their sin. He pleads for God to do whatever it is that, that needs to be done for them, and to do it for God's own name's sake. He asks God not to be like a traveler just passing through the land and kind of focused on his own stuff and leaving everything else alone as he goes. He reminds God that, that God is there even in their midst. He reminds him that, that they're called by his name. Don't, don't leave us, he says. Don't leave us to ourselves. Now, this is directly connected to tomorrow morning when he's going to say to Jeremiah, don't pray for this people for their good. We'll have to wait for tomorrow morning for that. But right here, though, uh, let's say this for the moment. Jeremiah's impulse is right. These people, they need to turn to God. They need to repent. They need to confess their sin. They need to to lay, throw themselves onto his mercy. But until their heart is in it, they will not turn. And until they turn, God's not going to turn. So everything's in a holding pattern without, without sin really fully addressed. It's kind of hanging fire, the situation. But we can still learn from Jeremiah because he's got the right argument. He's got it down. Notice again at verse 7, do it for your name's sake. We're guilty do whatever you're going to do, do it, do it for your name's sake. That's a good argument. We see it again and again in scripture. We see Moses and others with it. God, do whatever you'll do for us and do it for your name's sake. Why? Because, because God is good and God cannot act in contradiction to his own goodness. And so when you're asking God to work, you're asking God to act in harmony with his own goodness. And so Jeremiah is asking him, please act, act and do what's right. Do what is according to your goodness. He's asking God to do good. And to do good might not be what people want it to be. The people might need to be punished. The people might need to be brought to their knees so they can surrender their heart and find their way back home to him. Such in a prayer is, it is agreement that God is good. An agreement that you're asking him to act in goodness in whichever way he will act. You're saying to God, act in righteousness toward us. And we might not want the results of that immediately. But you know, this is a win-win situation, doing what's, what God only is good, is, is only going to do, and what he'll do toward us, which is good, actually ultimate good for us, that's a win-win. Let's seek him, always with the idea that we're asking him to do good in harmony with, with righteousness, with goodness. And we're just surrendered and we trust him completely. And that's going to work out just fine. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right with you. You are fundamentally good. You are at the root of all goodness. That's you. We ask you, Lord, to, to do stuff for us we cannot do for ourselves. Work so that our hearts are made pliable. Work so that the selfishness in our hearts is taken away and so that you can actually use us for something. So please, Lord, work in us. Do good. Work for us and do good, even if doing good seems to us very harmful at the time. Thank you, Lord, that we can depend on you always to do good when you act. Lord, this is about us being surrendered to you. May we be surrendered to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So God and people are connected. May he do what he does for us for his name's sake. And that's a plan you can take today out with you into the world. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.